Okay, so let's talk about the basic equipment you need. So I've mentioned we're not going to look at telescopes or binoculars or tripods or anything like that. That is still true, but there are other things that you could use that will be helpful. So hopefully you'll have access to most of these already. So the biggest issue with stargazing is that it gets colder than you think because you're stood still. It's usually the middle of the night, so like all the heat from the sun is gone. It's pretty cold and people forget that. So lots of layers, warm layers, hats, lots of socks. Some people even have clothing that self-heats and then you recharge it the next day. So lots of layers that you can add or remove. Some people even like carry sleeping bags with them as well. Even if you think, well, I live in a normally warm place, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite close towards the equator. It's better to have layers. You can add more, you can take more away. Um, but there's nothing worse than being cold and not having access to further layers to keep yourself warm. The next thing is you're going to spend some time outside. So you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be craning your neck backwards or causing neck strain. So a camping mat or a chair. So if you've got a like a, um, a ground sheet and mattress type thing for camping. Um, yoga mat or that's if it's really cold that's not going to feel great um, sleeping bag and blankets but a cheap camping chair they can cost um, 10 pounds and they're really quick to fold up into almost nothing the sort of same size as a yoga mat so get yourself comfortable deck chairs sun loungers they should be renamed star loungers because they are great for looking up and then as well as that having a supply of warm drinks so yes you want food and water and things like that but you also want warm drinks like tea coffee hot chocolate whatever it is to keep you warm on a cold night um because it can get very cold so hopefully you have most of those things and maybe invest in a camping chair or a yoga mat so the next thing is observing aids so the one key thing i recommend is a red light torch so it's a torch with um, red light coming out of it if you use a white light torch you're going to ruin your night vision it takes between 20 and 30 minutes for your eyes to become adjusted to the dark and you'll be surprised how much you can see in the dark once your eyes have become adjusted so even when I think I'm in a really dark field um, where I am locally once my eyes are adjusted I can see around me perfectly fine however as your eyes are becoming adjusted, you still need some light to see by. So red light doesn't interfere with your night vision. You can get cheap torches online for like ten pounds. Um, they're really easy to get hold of. You can also get uh, headlights as well. Now they can be a bit annoying when you turn around to talk to someone and you sort of shine red light in their eye, but um, they can be useful for things such as looking at. Um, tripods and cameras if you ever get to that stage or if you're looking at just like star charts or apps and things. So the next thing is you want to bring your observing plan and your aids such as a planisphere, star chart or even an app on your phone. Now if you have an app on your phone that could ruin your night vision so you want to make sure your phone is on night mode um, which will have like a deep pinky appearance on your screen. You can even buy um, screen covers that are an orangish pinkish color and that will help. Um, so you can do that on night mode and use the apps. But for that reason, a lot of people prefer to use star charts um, or even like monthly sky guides and red light just to find things. And I say your observing plans. So I mentioned in another video, for beginners, you're better off buying like a, a yearly almanac, which gives you a few targets each month to really focus in on. Um, that is your observing plan. If you get into things like astrophotography, you will have a more in-depth plan in place. Um, if you have, if you're working from generic star charts and maps, you may have a constellation you want to learn or something. So if you say, this night I really want to see if I can spot the Pleiades for example or Leo or Gemini or something like that then that is your plan so have a couple of targets that you want to work for on your plan and then any aids such as the star charts the planospheres 
um, a planisphere is a star chart that you can sort of move around. It's on a wheel and it will cover up part of the sky depending what time of the year it's on. And then finally, I like to create an observing log. So I'll make a note of the conditions, the time of year, the location I was at, what I managed to find or didn't find. Um, also, you can do random sketches as well. So sometimes you'll see something you're like, oh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, and obviously phone cameras are getting way better, but they um, don't have the dynamic range to necessarily capture what it was that you think you saw. So sometimes um, you can sketch things out uh, or you can actually practice sketching various different things to get used to where they are in the sky. I didn't really believe this until I got used to sketching the moon, and now I know my way around the moon surface pretty well. So doing the same with stars and constellations, um, just drawing what you see can help you really learn at the night sky. So in summary, we've covered the equipment you need. So you should have most of it, like warm clothes and a uh, flask that will keep warm drinks you might not have a camping chair or a yoga mat or anything like that that is one thing I would invest in and the red light torch um, pretty much anything else you you probably can cobble from things that you already have <laughs>